This conference will now be recorded. Okay, so if you remember first step class, we said that the primary objective of accounting and what we're doing in this course is learning how to prepare an income statement, a statement of retained earnings, a balance sheet, and a statement of cash flows. So those are the four statements that we're trying to prepare. And that's the purpose of accounting. Given that we have 10,000, 20,000 financial transactions that we record, we summarize all of those transactions in these statements, income statement, statement of return earnings and balance sheet, which we will uh, complete, you know, around next Wednesday at midterm and be tested on these. Then we begin on the statement of cash flow uh, after the midterm. The users of financial statements, investors, creditors, employees. So everybody, uh, there are a significant number of people and you all are included in terms of people who would use financial data because even if you're an employee, you need to make sure that the finances in that company are good. Then we went through and we looked at what an income statement would look like. And we said an income statement started with the income, less cost of goods sold, gross profit, operating expenses, subtracted. So we're always subtracting costs and expenses to get to our net income, subtract the income taxes, the net income after taxes. So this is what we're preparing and we'll do a simpler one. Then we do a statement of retained earnings, which says given the income we made, how much of it do we keep in the business? This statement always looks like this. Beginning with return earnings, add net income, less dividends, ending retained earnings. Then we do the balance sheet, which uh, summarizes, okay, given that we had the income of all these years, beginning of the year, end of the year, what are our assets, what are our liabilities, and what's our ending equity in the company? And we said always the assets has to equal the liabilities and the stockholders equity or the total equity in the company. So these two numbers always have to agree. And so that's the next thing that you'll be working to balance. And then we're gonna introduce this account called retained earnings today. So I'll just bowl it a little bit to, to let you know that that's the special account that we will be introduced to today. Any questions? Not right now. Not right now. Okay. Let's look at this accounting cycle that we worked on. And we worked on steps one and two the first week, analyze, tra analyzing transactions and making journal entries. Then we worked on steps three and four this week, posting to the ledger and preparing the trial balance. We're going to skip steps five and six. We'll cover those next week. But we're going to get right to step seven and eight preparing the financial statements and closing the accounts, preparing the financial statements and closing the accounts. So are we ready to prepare these financial statements and close the accounts? Yes, sir. Okay, so we ready. Okay, so let's turn to trial balance quiz two. 
Let's go to trial balance quiz two. So this is it and everybody should have it in Blackboard uh, trial balance quiz two. So what we're going to do is we're going to review trial balance quiz two. And then once we get that trial balance done, once we get that trial balance done, then we're going to go and prepare the financial statement. So, uh, so we're you know, going step by step, prepare the journal entry. Now we post it to the ledger and prepare the trial balance. We analyze them. So now we're ready for the next step. But we need to review trial balance quiz too, so everybody see how that worked and you know how they did. And the other thing that we're going to introduce today is our Excel spreadsheet and using this spreadsheet. Because I had at least one person yesterday who had to write their stuff down on scratch paper, then transfer it over. They had to write it down on scratch paper. Okay, so we're going to make these journal entries so and post them to the ledger, but we're going to do it in Excel and, and you'll see why we're doing that. Can everybody work with Excel? Does, does everybody understand Excel? Do both DTs understand Excel? Yes. Yes. Uh, Okay. So let's make this first journal entry then. So we, and then we'll post it. So we always on this first one, we know what's our type. That's uh, type one. The type one. And then we're going to do cash. Um, I count 100. That's 200,000. 200,000 debit or credit? Uh, credit. Uh, oh, no, 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 my, my, my bad, my bad, my bad, debit, my bad, debit. I got to hit him in the head. That's in that first journal entry. So we're going to debit it, correct? Yes, sir. 200,000? Yes, sir. And then what we're going to credit? Uh, common stock. What's our account number? 400. <laughs> going to debit or credit? No, uh, credit it. Okay. Okay, so let's go to our T accounts and post this. And what you see in this, these T accounts are some permanent accounts that stay with us all the time, and then some temporary accounts. We got the permanent account up top. These accounts go year to year. And then we have these temporary accounts, and we'll get into that a little bit later. So we're going to debit cash for what? 200000 And what we're going to credit? Uh, common stock. Let me see if I got a common stock account here anywhere. Um, I'll just put it here. It's a little out of order, but uh, let me just put it in here. So, you know, this is just a template that you work with. Now, why do we work with Excel? One of the reasons that we work with Excel is that it adds and subtracts for us. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to auto sum here so I can get my debits always total 200,000. 
and I'm going to auto sum on the other side too. So that hopefully when I put things, uh oh, let me undo that. I have to wait that I put something in over there so I can auto sum it. And then for my balance, let's see if we can put in an equation. So how are we, how are we going to write this equation to get this balance in cash? Does y'all understand Excel? We always start the equations off with what? Equal. Then we're going to put a parenthesis and I'm going to click on this account, you know, this line or this cell. Then I'm going to put a minus in and I'm going to click on this cell and I'm going to put a parenthesis. So once I get out of this, as I begin to add, and we'll see what happens, but now we're going to be continually what? Subtotaling your debits, subtotaling your credits, and coming up with a balance, hopefully. So any question on what we did there? Does everyone understand that? Where is the auto sum? I couldn't uh, see. Auto sum is up here to the right. Yeah, that's a, that's a favorite one. You see it now? Okay, I see it. Thank you. So all you got to do is highlight it and auto sum it. So this is gonna, hopefully you see this is gonna make your life a lot easier, right? All right, what's our next journal entry? Um, I can do that one, um, go back. It's gonna be seven will be, what's our type? The type is seven. Okay. And it's going to be for um, account number 130 for supplies, okay. $10,000 um, $10, debit, and it will be 100 for account number, for cash, and 10000 for credit. So let's go and post this then in our T accounts. So I'm gonna put the 10,000 debit and supplies. Then I'm gonna come over here to cash and put the 10,000 in. Now let's see if we can auto sum it. Look at that. How, how about that? How about that? What we got to say about that? Who's that writing yesterday? One Roquel. Was that you or dude who was doing all that writing yesterday? I did. I like to write. I did write. You did write too? That was me. I was, I don't know. I like to write stuff down. Will you need to write in like Sometimes I'll miss stuff. If I'm like... Will you need to write in Say it again? Will you need to do that writing anymore? No. No, I shouldn't. Because that you showed me a, um, a new way. Okay. What about Dominique? You already do it this way? Yes, sir. Okay. So let's go back to our screen. So this is how we're going to operate from now on. So you better get to your quizzes and everything very easily. I have a question on my Excel. I don't know if you've seen the one that I gave you, but is it okay if I added all of them across at the top? You, did you notice that I added all the extra categories? Because I didn't see that bottom part that you just had right there with the permanent and the temporary accounts. Yeah, go back and do it the, that way. 
Because your temporary okay. account is out of order compared to oh, mine. Go back. And it wouldn't take you that long. Go back and put the permanent accounts up top and mm -hmm. the temporary accounts below the line here. Because there's a reason okay. for that. Okay. There is a reason that we doing that I'm doing that. Which will be, you know, which will become clear as we go through. So I'm gonna take that, you know, you don't have to change what you've done so far, but as we go, as we go forward and everything. Okay, let's go down next journal entry. So I see we can and, and review these. So we're reviewing that test and going through them. So who who wants to do number three? Purchase a two-year insurance policy. Sam. Uh, I'll do I'll do number three. I just gotta find my document. So what's our type? Give me a second. Buying an asset is going to be seven again. Okay. Yep, yep, seven. Because we're buying an asset prepaid insurance. So make sure on the insurance that you always show it as an asset initially. Mm -hmm. And prepaid insurance is um, 131. Okay, one thirty-one, and then we're debiting twenty-four thousand. Then we have cash one hundred, and the credit is twenty-four thousand. So let's go to T accounts. So prepaid insurance is right there. You put that 24,000 for debit. And then you go over to cash credit for 24,000. And then you highlight. Oh, you never mind. It's oh, permanent. Oh. Yeah, yeah. Once we put the formula in, it's permanent. So every time we put things in here now, it's going to give us a balance. Okay. Okay. Then we do what? We purchase what? Purchase. Huh? Inventory on account. Wait, what'd you say? I said we, we're down journal entry four. Oh, I should do four? Yeah, go ahead, since you're up, and I'll help you on the other one. Four, we purchase inventory for the amount. So, for inventory we have. Be a tight. Oh, tight. We have a type three. Oh. Is it a type two? It's purchased on the account, so we got to be under the C. So look under C. That is, if we get cash, we won the six. Oh, if we okay, pay okay. cash, we it's seven to ten. So you cash said five. <laughs> so it should be what? It's not 12? Yeah, 12. What do we have in the 12? The asset purchase, right? What did we purchase? Inventory. What's our account number for inventory? 120. Yeah, 120. And the amount was 50,000. Yep. Then what are we crediting? Cash 100. Uh, 
Wait, 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 wait. Accounts payable. Okay, accounts payable. What number is that? 301. Jesus. Let's make him proud. Don't use his name in vain, but make him proud. Eat him this way. Using all of our talent. Okay, so let's post this. We'll go to inventory. Fifty thousand. And we'll just put the liability here, accounts payable. So with this Excel format, so you can kind of see now we we haven't been putting those journal entry types, you know, numbers in. But you could be doing that, you know, you'd have to put them in parentheses. Let me just see if it will. I'll work on that in terms of how we do that. Uh, with numbers. But that, that is a way to check. So we'll look at how we do that. What about number five? It's going to be transaction number seven. I mean, number 12. I'm sorry. Number 12 again. Uh -huh. Account number 130 for supplies. It's going to be debited, um, what they say, $15,000. And then account 301, accounts payable, would be credited $15,000. So you need that we want to the initial shop, right? Okay, so let's get that posted to, uh, to the accounts. So supplies, guess what? Um, debited fifteen thousand, and that's for number five in parentheses. And then accounts payable is going to be credited fifteen thousand for number five. So once I put that parentheses in, it doesn't move over. So I'm gonna take it that out. Let me just put fifteen thousand. We probably, with the accounts, we need to put in another space, another place for that. I'll, I'll work on a way to do that, but I'll probably have to put another column in. Well, on mine, I put the parentheses on each one of them, and it's still calculated. Correctly for me. Okay. Yeah. It didn't move over on this one, so I was wondering if it was going to calculate. Okay. Well, we'll work on it and see, but let's just put it here. It's another 15,000, correct? Yes. You had a parentheses before or afterwards? Afterwards. Okay. All right, so our next one, we're purchasing what? Cars. 10 automobiles. Yes. So in terms of autos, we're buying 
400,000 worth of autos. Board account numbers, autos. 210. We're paying, but there's two ways. First of all, we're making a cash payment. Yeah. And then you're going to do the most thing. How much are we paying down? 100,000. 100,000. And that's going to be a type what? Seven. Seven. Then we're signing a note. Balance. What's our account number for note payable? 350. 350. Okay. And it's going to be 300,000. So whenever we have, and this, of course, is going to be a type what? 12. So we bought it by the autos. We do a tax seven for part of it, 100,000. Then we do a tax 12 for the other. The debits and credits still have to be equal, okay? The debits and credits in that journal entry must be equal. So let's see if we can get this posted. So I need a place where I'm going to just put the autos here now. When we get on a trial balance, we're going to make sure they're in order. We said we paid cash. How much down? 100000 Then we had a note payable, right? I thought the auto was 40,000. Oh. Uh, is that, is that 40, about 10 of them for 40. Okay. Oh, never mind. About 10 for 40. Okay. Okay. Journal entry seven. What's our type here? Two. Type two. So we're going to debit what? Cash. That the amount of cash we're getting is what? 400,000. What are we going to credit? Sales. Account by 100. So we go to our T accounts. We put a debit in here for cash at 400,000. Let me go to sales and put a credit of 400,000. Okay. Then we pay what? Office hour. What's our type here? Nine. Nine payment of an expense.
What's our account number for office hours? Uh, six fifty. Eighty thousand. What are we going to credit? Cash. Okay, so let's go ahead and post that. Eighty thousand here. Go to cash and put it out. Eighty thousand. Then what's number nine? Fifty thousand. Fifteen for the type. Okay, so that's going to be a fifteen. Yes. So what are we gonna debit? Um, one hundred thousand. For the account, account receivable. I put account. I put account payable. Uh uh. But that's wrong. Okay, so. What does fifteen say? Should be an account receivable. That's a good one. That's that's money that you're gonna get. Like receivable. Okay, okay, I see that. Oh, so let me find that. What are we gonna credit? It's gonna be 500 sales for 100,000. So then let's see, we can go ahead and post that. Account receivable debit of a hundred thousand and sales a credit of a hundred thousand. Pay it on accounts payable twenty thousand. What type is that? Somebody squeaked out of eight. Excuse me, let me use my booming voice. Eight. Okay. <laughs> so what we're gonna debit with this eight? I put nine. Okay. I put a one. Why'd you put nine? Um. Oh yeah, I was wrong. I was confused on that one. <laughs> Never mind. <laughs> Just don't be confused with paying a liability. So you see how you can quickly be operating now. Once you got your journal entries and accounts, you can just click on them and copy them. And you know, we can do that in Word also. What's our amount paid on accounts paid with 20,000? That one, yeah. So let's go to our T accounts. You know, we got a credit in cash for 20,000. And we have a debit and accounts payable for 20,000. Then we're gonna pay on this note payable. So what's going to be involved in, uh, on this note payable? 25,000. Okay, so the total amount paid is 35,000. Yeah, because it's going to be First an interval. Of all, we're paying the, the note principal. So what's note payable? Three fifty. 
what's the amount that we're paying? $25,000. So what type is that? Um, I put type eight and then I put type nine. Then the next one is a nine. So whenever we have more than one account, we sort of lay it out this way. And so interest is what we pay. in addition to uh, what we borrowed, the principal. So what's our account for interest? 680. That amount is 10,000. Mm -hmm. We're gonna do what? Deb I mean, credit cash. I'm showing you how you can quickly move through now as you're doing homework, as you're doing exams, as we switch over to Excel. So let's see if we can get this posted. So cash, we have what, another what, 35,000 coming here, correct? Yes. Then we have to go to the note pal, and we're going to debit it for what? 25000 right? Then I'll just change this to interest expense. And the interest expense is a debit of 10,000. Cash collected from corporate customers. What type is that? Three. That's gonna be a three. So we're gonna come in and get our cash. And accounts receivable. We're going to credit account receivable. And the amount is going to be what? Um, 10,000, uh, 75,000. They want to go ahead and post that. So we got another 75,000 in here for cash. I have a credit and account receivable for 75,000. So you'll be, you know, we can do this, of course, on all of them, but on your biggest account cash now, you're keeping track of it. Okay, that's the that's to our final journal entry. Thirteen, okay. that's gonna be a type what? Ten. And we're going to debit what's that what's our account number? Uh four fifty five. Which is dividends. Mm hmm and we're going to credit cash. And the amount is $20,000, correct? Yes. And then let's go now T accounts. And let's post that 20,000 here. And then let's go to dividends.
Okay. Time for y'all to get to work now. Do me a trial balance. So I got this up for you. So you all are now going to do a trial balance in order that balances. Are there any questions by anyone? How long should it take you to do this trial balance? I'm going to give you all 10 minutes. Professor? Yes. Can you show me how to do the auto sum again real quick? Uh, you just, okay. Let's look at accounts payable. Okay. So we want to put an auto sum here. We click on it, we highlight it, then we click auto sum. That's okay. all it takes. Got it? Okay, thank you. All right, let's click on it again. Get the other side, auto sum. Okay. Now let's okay. put in the formula for the balance. Can you do that? Um you put equal sign put the equal sign in and then click on the cell 22 20 000 right there well let's put a parentheses in first okay. and since we wanted to have a credit balance let's pick let's click on this cell here then okay. let's put a, then let's put a minus in then let's click on the twenty thousand cell and put our parentheses. How's that look? It looks, it looks right. How does it look in Thank terms you. of you doing it? 
You talking about for me? Yeah. Yeah, I'm getting the hang of it. Now. I'm understanding it. What about the, are you getting my trial balance done? No, I'm still on the T accounts. I okay, we'll finish the T accounts.
How's our trial balance coming? Am I finished with them? Yes. I hear one yes. No. Yes. Are you watching the Game of Thrones? Game of Thrones? Who got some Game of Thrones in? Because oh. I heard it, I heard it in the background. <laughs> I don't have Game of Thrones on. Who has Game of Thrones on? Nice you to John as Miss Crystal. You didn't have Game of Thrones on, did you? That was me. So why would you do that? Yeah, I'm just teasing Crystal because she's asking. Nice. What so. you say? What did you say? You had computer problems. See? I did. So you got those solved now, you think? Mm, yeah, kind of. Okay. Now, somebody was listening, you know, listening to Game of Thrones. I know, I heard it. <laughs> so that's it. She, she, uh, she uh, admitted. So we're going to let her put the first thing on this uh, trial balance. Well, I'm not going to take it. Away. It's just in the background. I'm not going to take away from Dave, though. I'm not going to let you steal Dave's glory. So basically, you, you, you will be putting these accounts on just like they are here. I uh, wish I could be lazy and copy them. All right, Dave, so what's our first account on the trial balance? It is cash. It'll be cash. How much is in cash? $386,000. Okay. Okay, what's our second account? Uh, I'll put down a common stock. No. This should be accounts receivable for twenty debited for twenty five thousand. Accounts receivable comes in order um, before common stock does. You have to put them in order as a chart of accounts. You gotta have it was a same order as chart of accounts. We kind of got them like that over there. You know, assets, liabilities, equity, revenue, and expenses. So how much is receivables? Twenty-five thousand. Twenty-five thousand. Okay. What's gonna be the third account? I mean, let's just go and look at them right 
and go back over to the to the counter. See, the counter got them in order already. Okay. Could be inventory. Mm-hmm. Fifty thousand for DVD. How much is the inventory? Fifty thousand. What's next? Supplies debited twenty five thousand. Next. Prepaid insurance debited twenty four thousand. Next. Auto debited four hundred thousand. Next. Accounts payable and it's credited forty five thousand. Next. No payable, thirty five thousand for credit. No, notes payable. It'll be credited two hundred and seventy five thousand from the numbers I got off of what he put. Let me. Yeah, we had a three hundred credit and a twenty five thousand dollar debit. Where did that be one? Yeah, so that comes to a total of two hundred and seventy five thousand credited. Okay. To okay. the notes payable. You want to practice and put your formulas in to do this for you automatically. Okay. So, all right, if I ask you to put the formula in, what would the formula be to calculate it? Give me a formula. It's a liability, so I want it over here. I wanted to have a credit balance. So, what's the first thing I'm going to put down? The equal sign. Equal mm -hmm. sign. Oh, yeah. Then a parent. I, I haven't used it. Then I'm going to click here. Then I'm going to put a minus sign down. Then I'm going to click over here. Then I'm going to put a parenthesis down. So, Raquel, get rid of your paper. Okay. You promise? Yes, I'm going to throw it away. <laughs> right. okay. well, six can I can see you can do all, you, you can change and do everything you are and, it's, you know, get your formulas in. And so you just practice this. It's not that hard. So was that notes payable is what, 275? Yes, sir. And what's next? Common stock, and it'll be credited 200000 And I'm a sneak in here. Retain earnings. <laughs> and right now we have a new com company, so its balance is zero. Then we have what? Dividends. Debited twenty thousand. So dividends is the next item, twenty thousand. Then what's gonna come next? Sales credited five hundred thousand. Then salary expense. Debited eighty thousand. And what's our final expense? Interest expense debited ten thousand.
So we're in here, so let's do an auto sum. So all we do is highlight here. Here. Or you just do it's gonna come to one million thousand. Yep. Make our space a little larger. So whenever that happens, you just make them a little larger. So we ought to sum the left and we ought to sum the right. And see if we in balance. Are we in balance? Yes. Any questions on the trial balance and what we've done so far today? Okay, so let's make an income statement. For the income statement, Every item from sales down goes on the income statement. Every number from sales down goes on the income statement. So we're doing this income statement. We take the 500,000 here, copy it, and we put it here. Got our income in. We don't have a cost of goods sold. So our gross margin is also going to be 500,000. Then for our operating expenses, that's, since that's all we have, we'll copy our operating expenses, the ones we have. And we'll just put them in this box here. Then we'll go through and copy our amount for the operating expenses, copy. and we'll paste them here. So we got our operating expenses in now. So we're gonna subtotal those operating expenses. We know that's going to be what? $90,000. Then our net income simply becomes So we just put a formula in to subtract sales less the subtotal operating expenses. Okay, that's net income. That's that's an income statement. That is an income statement. What about that, Dominique? That's perfect. So that's all it takes to do an income statement. We look at every item from sales on down. We put the revenue up here, we put the expenses here, and we subtract them, we got an income statement. The next thing we look at is how much of this income we retained in the business. So our beginning retain earnings, as we said, was zero. Okay. We're going to add our net income for 10. So we just bring down the net income from here, bring it down here. So we had cumulative earnings in the business of $410,000.
which you know consisted of the income this year, then there, there was no previous income. Now, how much did we retain? This is where dividends comes in. We're gonna take the 20,000 in dividends and put it here. So the ending retained earnings is 410 less 20 or what? Let's just put a formula in here because if we have a formula in, whenever we make changes, we can always quickly calculate them. So this is going to be equal to the subtotal here minus the dividends. So 390 becomes the retained. See, we had earnings of 410. And so we retain, we paid out 20 to the shareholder. So of the 410, we only kept 390 in the business. Any questions? Well, we determine how much of the earnings that we kept in the business. Okay, let's do a balance sheet. A balance sheet is going to consist of the accounts from retained earnings up. Oh, that doesn't work well. I'll go back to red. Okay. So any account from retained earnings up will go on the balance sheet. A balance sheet is just a listing of all of our assets and liabilities and our equity. Now, all of these accounts below retained earnings are temporary accounts. Okay. That's why, that's why we have them down here. These accounts don't carry forward. We use them for a period, we summarize them, and then we put them in the retained earnings. Uh, but it's similar to your, your bill that you get from TSU for the summer. If you pay that bill, then you want to close down and you get a new bill in the fall, but you don't want left on that bill what was there for the summer if you paid it. So that's sort of how these temporary accounts work. So if we're preparing the balance sheet and we'll do a simple one, we'll just uh, do the asset first. So we're just going to Look at our assets and we can just copy them. So now we have all of our assets. Remember these are assets. So on the left side of the balance sheet of the assets and we add them up. So the total assets in the business are 910. That is these items up here. Next, we want to pick up the liability. So, and what we're trying to do is to make sure the assets are going to equal the liabilities plus the owner's equity. Assets have to equal liabilities plus owner's equity. So I'm going to come in here and pull up my liabilities. paste them right there. Then I'm gonna come over and get my dollar amounts in each one.
then I'll auto summon to come up with my total liabilities. So my total liabilities are 320. Now I need to get my common stock and my retained earnings. A common stock was 200,000. But my retained earnings is not my initial retained earnings of zero, it's the final retained earnings of 390,000. So whatever I have on the statement of retained earnings as the ending retained earnings, I'm gonna put that here. Then I'm gonna add my total stockholders equity. And I get 590. Then I got to add total liabilities and the total equity and try to get an amount equal to this. So I'll put in here the equation uh, equal shift parentheses i'm going to click on total liabilities and i need a plus sign i'm going to pick pick up the total stockholders equity and i'll put a parentheses and they're the same so what you're trying to do now is to make sure at the end of the day you have a balance sheet which show that the total assets have to equal the total liabilities plus uh, owner's equity. That's that initial accounting equation, assets equals liabilities plus owner's equity, a stockholder's equity. So we've just prepared three statements. We prepared the income statement, which showed us how much income we had for the period. Then we prepared a statement of retained earnings, which showed us how much of the earnings we retained in the business. Finally, we prepared a balance sheet. That balance sheet is a reflection of the equation assets equal equal sign here. It does want me to put my equal sign in here. I better just type it. So assets always have to equal Assets have to always equal liabilities plus owner's equity. So when you're preparing these three statements, you get a net income, then you determine how much is retained in the business, and then you prepare a balance sheet, and these items always must be equal. Now, if we go back to our T accounts, Right now, we know retained earnings has a zero balance, okay? But from uh, this statement here, 390, as the ending balance, we need to get $390,000 into retain earnings as a credit amount. We need $390,000 in retain earnings as a credit amount. 
how we're going to do that. We're going to close out all of these accounts, the low retain earnings. All of these are temporary retained earnings accounts. And we're going to close out all of these. Ah, uh, what's a good color? Okay. All of these accounts below the line are going to eventually be closed out so we can get to the 410. So we make what's called closing entries. And so we have closing entry number one. And in closing entry number one, we close out the revenue. So we're going to debit sales. Now to close it out, we got we're gonna debit it. We're gonna credit an account called income summary. And we're just going to put that revenue in here, 500,000. So in closing entry number one, we close out the revenue. Whenever we make a journal entry, we have to post it. And so now we're going to come back to our T accounts. And we're going to debit sale, debit sales, 500,000. And we're going to credit income summary, 500,000. This is just a temporary account that we close because we don't want a lot of interest in retained earnings. We want to make sure that it's only in earnings and dividends. So in the first closing entry, we debit it, and now this account is zeroed out. So once we do that, I learned how to put a strike in here eventually, but now this account is zeroed out. So the balance in the account in sales now is zero. Okay. So we make an entry, it had 500,000 in it. So we credit it, so the balance will be zero. Okay, closing entry two, are the expenses. So now we're ready to make closing entry two. So in closing entry two, we're going to debit income summary. Uh, it doesn't want to move. Okay, got it over. So we're going to debit income summary for the subtotal here of 90,000 total expenses. Then we're going to take these expenses 
and we're going to credit them. And so we'll take the eight and 10. So in closing entry two, we close out all the expenses, closing entry one, the revenue, closing entry two, the expenses. Now, whenever we make a closing, any journal entry, we have to post it. So we're gonna go back to our T accounts. And we will now debit income summary for 90,000. And we're going to credit these expenses. So we put a nine, uh, 80,000 here. This account is closed out. We put 10,000 here. So these accounts now have zero balances there because they served a purpose for us to determine the net income. We get rid of them because we need a new set for the next year. Okay. Then we go to closing entry three. Closing entry three is always the net income. Closing entry three is always the net income. That's the dollar amount in closing entry three. The accounts are, we're now going to debit income summary. And we're going to credit now retained earnings. For the amount of the net income. So whatever the net income is, so closing entry three is always the net income. That's why I put them right here. I could have put them on this next sheet, but I'm showing you where they come from. So closing entry three is always net income. So now let's post that net, post that to the T accounts. So when we post the, uh, that to the T accounts, we're going to debit income summary for 410,000. We're going to credit retained earnings for 410,000. So once we do that, then the income summary now has a zero balance. We didn't want to put these amounts in here. We only want to show the net income and retain earnings, not close. You know, you might have a hundred accounts here. So we don't want all of that reflected in a closing entry. We just want to see the net income. What's closing entry four going to be? What do you think closing entry four is going to be? Accounts payable. No. Okay, let's look at it. Let's go back to the T account. If an account is up here, it's not closed. If it's down here, it is closed. What account down here still has a balance? Sales. And dividends. Dividends, thank you. Dividends still has a balance. So when we get ready to make closing entries, our final closing entry is the dividends. And so we're going to, with the dividends, we will debit retain earnings because that reduces income with paying it out. And we're going to credit dividends. For the 20,000.
So once we do that, now we got to post this journal entry. So we go back in here to our T accounts. So now we're going to credit dividends for 20,000. We're going to debit retain earnings for 20,000. Once that's done, all the temporary accounts are closed. We create income summary because we only want to see one number in retain earnings for 10. We don't want to see all of this information here because that's, that's an important determinant of how a company is doing. What's this earnings after the common stock? Okay, you put 200,000 in it. How much money did you earn? This is your money. So the profitability of the company is based on does it have earnings that are retained in the business? And we said the retained earnings is all the balance in this account. Credit of 14, debit of 2390. And so that 390. So we go back to the trial balance now. All of these accounts have been closed out. And now uh, retain earnings as a 390 balance. And I'll just put this in red. Okay, I don't have to, would not let me keep it in red. Let me see if I can get another color on it. Okay, at least lets me leave it in blue. So what this tells you is that you no longer have these amounts. You've summarized those and retain earnings moves from zero to three nine. That's the closing process that every company in the world uses. And not for profits such as Texas Southern City of Houston. They have permanent accounts. They, you know, they're in the balance sheet, this is what we have. Then they have temporary accounts and revenues and the goal is to see how you know, this account changes based on all these other accounts. But these are all just temporary retained earnings accounts. And once we've utilized them for the semester, for the year, and we prepared these statements, income statement, statement retained earnings, then we got to make those closing entries so the retained earnings is that amount. So, how are we doing? Can you prepare a, a financial statement now, an income statement, a balance sheet, and a statement of retained earnings? Sam is scratching his forehead. What about it, Darius? Yes, I believe so. Thanks. Okay. So next week, next week, unless Crystal wants to meet tomorrow, uh, we will work a problem all the way through again. So you see, we just work this problem all the way through. Okay. So your job now is to go to the first journal entry quiz. So what do we have at Blackboard for the first journal entry quiz?
So for homework, you do that journal, journal entry practice quiz. I think it was only five or six transactions. So you do a simple one where you go through the whole process. If you don't have dividends, you don't have it. Then in class, we'll do, we'll just continue to work those uh, quizzes we've had where we will go through the whole process, make journal entry, post to the ledger, do a trial balance, do those financial statements and closing entries. We'll do that on Monday. Then we're gonna do it again on Tuesday. And if we're ready by Tuesday, then we'll have our midterm exam on Wednesday. But Sam, if you're not ready on Wednesday, then you can take it on Thursday. Now my eight students are gonna be ready on Wednesday, right? Can we, can we decide what day we wanna take it on? Can you decide what day you want to take it on? No, I, I'd rather take it on Wednesday than Thursday. Why? Okay. Well, it's going to be depending on you have a quiz on Tuesday on doing this. So if you can't do the quiz on Tuesday, then you know you got you need some more work. So there's, there's always an option. And it's usual, you know, for the eight students who take it on Wednesday, you know, they don't have to come to class on Thursday. I don't want to spoil you, Krista, though, because I, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Krista, but I don't know. Darius kind of hangs in there, man. But anyway, so on Thursday, then the eight students, We'll go to the 40 journal entries. And they would take those 40 journal entries that they've already got their trial balance done for. And they're gonna prepare these three financial statements and the closing entries. So that's what they would do on Thursday. But they won't be in class. So, if you happen to be moving right along, so see students, you know, you got to get me a study problem. So your study problem is only gonna be the first 20 journal entries. So, so B and C students, you just got to do the first journal entry, 20 journal entries, and you should have them already. You got to do me a trial balance. Go to the left, do a trial balance. Then you got to do the financial statements for the first 20. And that's your study problem that you got to get done. Okay. So, you know, we covered the day, we did it today. And so we'll work a simple one on Monday. And we will continue to work them. So we continue to go through the process so that you don't forget how to do journal entries. Journal entries is the only hard thing. Everything else is kind of procedural. You said what was you said that was due soon tomorrow? You said something. On Monday, your homework is that first study problem. I mean first journal entry quiz. I think it was an attendance quiz. But you only oh. had six or seven journal entries. You're gonna go through that whole process and turn that in to me on Monday. I'm saying by the end of the week, next week, by the end of the week, next week, a students gotta have all 40 journal entries done with these statements prepared and closing entries. B and C students have to have the first 20 in that study problem done. You got to post them to the ledger, do a trial balance, do the financial statements and the closing entries. So that's kind of to prep you. So James, if you want to take the exam on Wednesday, you got to have that done on Tuesday. Got it? Okay, 
don't know if he's still there. You still there, James? I guess he's taking a break. So we'll, we'll go over that. But you all will learn how to do this. You learn how to do everything else, right? You, you couldn't make a journal entry a couple of weeks ago. Now you can go through and prepare, make journal entry, prepare trial balance. So this is next in the process. With a company, you never see their journal entries. You will never see their T accounts. You will never see their trial balance. The only thing you will see are the financial statements. So you have to learn how they made them and what they did and understand that. So we, I have confidence that next week, next week, Everybody will be prepared. You know, some of the exams will be longer than others, but everybody will be preparing, going through the whole cycle. Everybody will be going through the whole cycle. That's the plan. Okay. Any questions? So what do I have to turn in? like by next week well right now for next week you simply have to do that journal entry practice quiz run it the whole it has about five journal entries you got to take that through the entire process by the end of next week the first 20 journal entry in the study problem that in that our jhj Ron car company the first 20 journal entries, mm -hmm. everything we did today, you got to do it on that first 20, 20 journal entries. You're also supposed, also supposed to have a name for your company and bylaws and some things like that. So, so that may be helping. That may be easy to do as you, you know, gather your points. But we got to finish the journal entry study problem. And at some point, we got to get all 70 of them done, Darius. Crystal, we gotta get all 70 of them done. But that's what they A students, you know, they gotta get all so see Sam, you you you'll be set on by 20. So, but if you want to be A student, you gotta get 70 of them done. Are we not moving at the pace of like a regular semester? Say that again. We're we're moving at the pace of a regular semester, right? Yeah. That's not good. Why? We're meeting every day. You all, you all doing better than people do doing the regular semester. You, 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 you really, you'd be surprised. Can't you make a journal entry now? Yeah, but it takes me more than two minutes. Takes you more than two minutes. Well, some people can't make them at all when they finish principles one. Some people take principles one and they cannot make a journal entry at all. Now, you know, if we, we go over, we review stuff, if there's a problem, we look at it and everything. But, you know, you know, there's a requirement that I've got to get you so far, but then I adjust it back. And that's where Fridays come in, Sam. That is, if we're having trouble, then we have office hours on Friday or whenever else you want them to go over it. But you know, I can't make a decision that I not cover certain things because some people may be in principles two the second summer session. And if they are, it's expected that they know that material. Or they're taking in the fall. It's expected that they've covered all that material. They don't ask you whether you have principles two in the summer or the fall or the spring semester. They ask, do you know the material? That's number one. Number two, because you come to class four days a week, you're learning it better. You're learning it better, okay? That's a better learning process every day. So I just taught it in the spring now, and I think, you know, they're about, 
weeks. I started off with about 35 students. About 15 students didn't pass the course. Not that they didn't pass, they just didn't stay with it. So we had the whole semester, about 15 students stopped coming to class and they just quit. And a lot of professors were saying that on various things. So that's why I got these cameras on now. And, you know, so to, to guard against that, because there's no need for you to, I got a class that's online, I'm doing all kinds of things, and I don't pass it. So if you got your, if you got your camera on and you're doing what I tell you to do, then it's on me to make sure you pass, Sam. If you got your camera on and you're doing what I tell you to do, then I take responsibility for you passing. Okay, but if you but if you're not doing what I tell you to do, don't have your camera on doing a little bit of work. I mean, it's like now we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven people here. There are about 13 or so in the course. So some people are not coming now. Some people took yesterday off. I took the day off. They said, Well, I had a quiz yesterday, I'm taking it off. So for those people, yes, yeah, summer is a hurt because you know you can, you just can't miss. So now what we cover today, they gotta learn some kind of way. Like I said, got the video. Uh, let's see. 